Hello, how's it going? This is Hellbent, and welcome back to part four in my if statements tutorial for auto hotkey. Um, it's been about a week since I did part three, so I'm just going to update the date of today's date, which is the 21st. And then I'm going to comment out the last thing we had worked on. Okay, uh, the first thing we're going to look at is equals, 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 and not equals. All right, so we'll just go through this one at a time. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable. And this variable I'm going to call my password. And I am going to make it equal. Um, let's make it equal hellbent. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to ask a user to enter their password. I want to make sure that it's the right user. So we're going to have our input box. And our output variable, we'll just call it uh, user input. It's been a, f a few days since I've actually done any coding so I'm a little bit uh, rusty okay so our prompt is uh, please enter your password okay that should be good and then what we'll do is like I said before sometimes with the input box and uh, the message box they can overlap so we'll just add a little bit of a delay so sleep of half of a second which is basically nothing for this purpose and now what we're going to do is we're going to test if it equals so first we're going to say if um, if our user input equals our my password We're going to have a message box that says that it it's the same. Uh, so msgbox, and then we'll just say okay, and then we'll go down a little bit, and we'll say else. We'll just say else for now. So I think I'm happy with that. Do I am I missing anything? I think I think I have everything. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and save that and hit play. So enter my password. So I'm going to try with I'm going to try putting the wrong password in first. And it says it is not the same. Okay, so that means it's the wrong password. Let's try that again. This time I'm going to enter the same, the right password, but I'm going to use low, all lowercase. Actually, here let's go, let's add in some uppercase into that as well. And it says it's the same. Now, what if we wanted it to be case sensitive? So in this case, we got it to ring true, even if we used different case sensitive. But what if we actually want it to be like most passwords, where it has to be case sensitive? In that case, what we need to do is instead of this equal operator what we're going to do is we're actually going to do the equals equals which is case sensitive so I'm just going to comment this out and we're going to recreate that exact same thing now I could have done it I could have added it into the the previous if statements but at least this way you have different examples uh, user input if it equals equals this time um, my password and we'll do our message box and we'll say if 
that is the right password and then we'll come down and we'll say else and our message box that is not the right password alright so now let's try that again I'll save make sure it's saved and I'll run it okay so this time I'm gonna try it with just lowercase all lowercase and when I declared it as you notice I did a uppercase H to begin with so if I do this it should be that is not the right password because the H is different so let's try a different one let's uh, let's leave that the same and we'll put this to an uppercase as well we'll save and we'll play it again and this time we'll do the right one that is the right password and if I try that again without let's just do it there so this is not the right password so it should say it's not the right password okay so that's the equals operator and the equals equals operator or case sensitive operator last but not least in this section is going to be does not equal so I'm going to go ahead and comment out this here and if you have the same uh, software as I have here if you're wondering how to comment blocks out like that it's just control plus Q and that'll comment it out and then once you go you can highlight it back again and press control Q again and it'll make it active so I'm not sure if I ever mentioned that before okay so in this one we're gonna create a new variable and we're gonna call this uh, let's call it lucky number okay and we're gonna make our lucky number 69 and then we're gonna have an input box and our variable we're just gonna call it temp because it's easier to write that so our variable for our input box is gonna be temp so whatever the user inputs into it it's gonna be stored in the variable called temp and what do I need I need a uh, I guess it's not yours because I'm going to say if it's wrong or not. So I'm going to say the. Okay. And then I'm going to add my sleep of half of a second. And then we can go into our if statements. So this time I'm going to check if temp, if our temp variable does not equal so right now our te our lucky our lucky number is 69 so what we want to check to make to see is if our temp variable does not equal that now we can say does temp equal 68 does temp equal 67 does equal 66 and we can do a, a, a quadrillion different if statements to check to see if it equals that or we can just check all at once if it does not equal our thing so the way we do that is we just say exclamation point equals which means our temp does it equal not equal our variable that we have for lucky number so so we just said if temp does not equal lucky number we're gonna do this and we just want a message box and okay it does not match and then we'll just add in an else and obviously in this case it must match if it doesn't if it's not not it must be true so I'll just say something to that line to that end uh, okay 
So we'll go ahead and save the changes and run it. So I'm going to enter my... I... Okay, let me see something. Obviously I forgot to comment out something. There we go. So I'm going to comment this out as well. Okay, and we'll try that again. Save and run. Okay, so I'm going to enter my lucky number. My lucky number is 56, and it does not match. So that is our does not match. All right, now if I do that again, and this time I am going to write, enter in the right number, which is 69. I press OK, and it says it must match. Now I know these these examples are you might have a little bit of difficulty in following what's going on with these um, I have a whole bunch of other videos in my on my channel that I use if statements in pretty much every single program so these are kind of an introduction so you can see the different ways that you can use an if statement if you want to have practical practice with them um, you can just play around with it yourself, do, have it do different things, or you can go to some of my other tutorials, watch through them, and you get a better feel for what exactly, how to exactly use the if statements to create different um, outcomes to your scripts. Okay, so that's it for this. So we have equals means it can just, as long as it equals it, um, so, for example, with the password, it doesn't matter if it's case sensitive or not. As long as it's the same characters, no problem. You're going to have the right output. Um, if you want it to be case sensitive, you use the equals equals operator. And if you want to check to make sure to see if it's not the same as the value stored in your variable, you use the does not equals operator. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and comment that all out and we can move on to the next section okay so here we have true false or null okay so here I don't actually need to do input box I can just create a variable so I'm gonna call my variable um, what do I want to call it uh, let's just call it test so I have a variable, I named it test, and I'm going to have it say its value equals 1. And then I'm going to say if, what am I testing here? True, false, or no? Okay. So in computers, a 0 is a false value, a 1 is a true value, and a null value is just a bunch of gibberish to the computer so it's like a whole bunch of not uh, strings of numbers that don't mean anything and it knows how it knows how to identify that because obviously a if I'm looking for a null value which is basically no real value I can't use a value of zero because a, ver a value of zero isn't a null value it's a it's a it's a false value so obviously a false value cannot be a null value. So we're going to test to see if our variable is true, if it's false, or if it's null. And then we're just going to change the value of this test variable to test the different things. Okay, so we're going to say if test equals true, we're going to have a message box that says it's true. And then we're going to test if it's false. Oh, messed up somehow. Okay, so we need a message box. The value is false. And then last we will actually we don't we're not going to use a else we're going to actually use a if so if test equals null
Okay, we'll save that and we will run. Now you notice that I didn't actually have to use an else if in this because if this one's true, obviously all the rest of them aren't going to be. So I don't need to have it staged where I use else in this. Okay, so clearly I have a value of 1. Like I said, a value of 1 is a is a true value. Now I'm going to go ahead and change this to a 0. And I run it again and our value is false because we have a value of 0. And then I'm going to change this to nothing. So I've just I'm just going to initialize the variable. I'm not going to store anything in it. So automatically it's going to store a garbage value into it, which is a null value. So I will get a null thing. Okay. So there we go. Um, <clears throat> let's see what else can we do here. Let's see what happens when we put a value of two in here. We get nothing. So what we can do is we're going to incorporate something from the last one here. So if test, no, you know what? That's coming up next, so I don't want to do that. So let's just add an else. Else message box. So the value is not true, false, or null. Okay, so that's true or false. And we can manipulate these things. We can also just type in the word. Actually, you know, I haven't actually tested it like this before. I'm not sure what's going to happen. Because usually when you put a... Because I'm not, I'm not trying to store true as a string. I'm trying to store it as a, a one value. So I'm not sure what's going to happen. So let's just check. And it says it's true. So it, it knows it knows to not to treat this as a string. So that's pretty pretty cool to know. And we can also do this. I think we can do the same with uh, false and null as well. Yeah. Okay. So so that answers that. You can actually store the value as a false like that. But like I said, you can also do it. You can also do it with just by storing a zero in it. And with when you write your scripts, what you can do is change the values of different variables by using testing conditions. So um, let's say I have one variable that has nothing to do with the, the true or false. It's just some other variable. If I come apart across in my script, a part where it checks its value, if its value is a specific thing, inside of that if statement, I can change the value of something else to a true or false. Or I can change a whole bunch of things to true or false. Right? Okay. So we that's it for this. Um, let me see how much time we're into. All right, we're up to 18 minutes, so that's it for this one. Um, hopefully, later on today, I'll upload the last of uh, the if statements, and then we're going to move on to, I think we're going to go on to functions, but I haven't completely decided yet. But anyways, I will see you on the next one. Have a good day.